Welcome. I'm Steve Tackett of Grace Bible Network. We are very pleased to welcome you to this video class. We are proud of the quality of Grace Bible Network's online Bible studies and recordings available on both our website and YouTube. Whether you watch them online or just listen to the audio portion on your commute to work, we are glad you're here. Please enjoy the recording. Okay, welcome to the Monday Night Bible Study. And our subject for tonight is going to be how Satan attacks the Word of God. Um, we've covered this subject in other areas in the past, and uh, but I think it's good to revisit this issue every now and then because uh, it is a very important issue. It's not a secondary issue. It's a, it's a major issue. As to, you know, the Word of God uh, is our only uh, method of having faith in God. Our faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, as it says in Romans 10, 17. And God has promised to preserve his word for us. And so we need to figure out where it's at. Not do we have his word preserved for us, but where is his word preserved for us? And so that's going to be uh, the subject for tonight. For tonight. Uh, but let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this time we can spend together on the Internet. We pray, Lord, that uh, as those that are participating, those that watch this on YouTube, uh, will uh, consider the points that are being made. and. Uh, consider the importance of this issue and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. If you go on Google, get on your phone or on your computer and Google the question, what is the most accurate Bible version out there? This is one of the things that will come up. Something to the effect of uh, for example, the New American Standard Version is a literal translation from the original text. And that's the sort of thing that most people, unfortunately, believe. They believe that that is a true statement. And that's really not a true statement at all. It's very, very misleading. The New American Standard is not a literal translation from the original text. There is no original text. Uh, there are no originals. There's only copies of originals. Uh, there's no such thing as an original text. There's no such thing as manuscripts that were the very first manuscripts that were ever uh, written down, uh, used to translate any Bible. Nowhere. There is there is no such thing. It does not exist. Um, but what is meant by statements like the one I just read, the New American Standard is a literal translation from the original text. What that actually means is, and again, most people are, don't even know this, but what that actually means is, Certain Bible scholars have taken the view that the Alexandrian manuscripts are the closest to the original text. Now, what is the Alexandrian manuscripts? Well, I'll give you the very short version of this. Th those manuscripts are manuscripts that were found in a monastery on, Ma on Mount uh, Athos in Alexandria, Egypt in the year 1621 in a trash can. And what it contains is some manuscripts that have been named the Sinaiticus and Vaticanus writings. And those manuscripts are what are used to translate 
every Bible that's in English except the King James Bible. Interesting. Now, before the year 1621, all Bible versions that were written, whether they were in English or some other language, all Bible versions that were written, including the King James, were based upon the manuscripts that already existed before these manuscripts that were discovered in 1621. And there go by the name of the majority text or the Textus Receptus. Now, what's interesting about that is this. There's a little over 5,000 pieces of manuscript evidence that are in existence today. About 95% of those manuscripts are what is used to translate the King James and many other uh, versions of the Bible um, before 1621. Now, these other manuscripts that we're talking about right now, these uh, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus manuscripts that came from Alexandria, Egypt in 1621, they are referred to as the minority text. And the reason they're referred to as the minority text is because they're, they are a smaller number of manuscripts that do not agree with the majority text, with the majority manuscripts. The little over 5,000 pieces of manuscript evidence that we have today, those, major, those minority manuscripts, that minority text, the Alexandrian text, they don't agree with the majority text, so they're called the minority text. In fact, amongst the manuscripts called the mi minority text, they don't agree with each other. And again, where were they found? They were found in a trash can in a Greek or Orthodox, excuse me, a Greek Orthodox monastery in Alexandria, Egypt in 1621. Now, let's turn to Psalms chapter 12. And uh, hopefully I'll make a point that's important on this issue from Psalms chapter 12. Psalms chapter 12, verse 6. Psalms chapter 12, verse 6, verse says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7, Thou shalt keep them, the words, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation for how long? Forever, it says. God has promised to preserve his words pure forever. Let's look at another verse on this subject. Look at Matthew chapter 24. And we'll look at verse 35. The Lord Jesus Christ himself stated this in verse 35. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, plural, words shall not pass away. That's the Lord Jesus Christ himself saying that. And then you've got the Old Testament law that says something very interesting. If you'll turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4, 
and look at verse 2. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. In other words, don't take anything away from it. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Well, if they don't have all of his words, how can they keep it? You he, always, you're always, if you, if you're part of this Bible study uh, on a regular basis, you know that I'm always quoting Matthew chapter four, verse four, because what does it say? It says, Jesus uh, going toe to toe with the enemy himself. He says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, just like we read in Deuteronomy 4, if man is to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, well, God would be very unjust and cruel and unfair if he didn't provide you every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know, he's going to judge people by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah. He says in John, the Gospel of John, I'm going to see if I can find this. I didn't write it down. And so the chances aren't very good that I will find it, but we will try. John chapter five. And I want you to look at verse 24. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting night and shall not everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I want you to also look at verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you know what? God's going to judge some people by his words. He says in John chapter 'll we'll skip that part because I didn't write it down but I want you to consider this God's promise to preserve his word he preserved his word perfect he says pure words he's going to preserve them perfect Jesus himself said heaven and earth will pass away but my words plural shall not pass away now think about that for a minute Man is to live by every word of God, according to the Lord Jesus Christ. Man is to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. 
Well, how can it be that some manuscripts that were found in a trash can in the year 1621 contradicts those truths because that's what they're doing. They're saying that these manuscripts found in the trash can are the originals. They're close to the originals. They're a more accurate rendering of what God said. And so everybody before 1621, ah, well, I guess they were out of luck. They didn't have all of God's word. It wasn't an accurate translation that they had. God didn't preserve his word perfect. That's what you have to believe if you believe that those manuscripts found in that trash can in 1621 are closer to the originals and more accurate than what they already had prior to 1621. Do you remember the first statement that I made at the beginning of this message where I quoted from the um, Google search where somebody says that the New American Standard Version is a literal translation and it's based on the original text. Well, let's just do a little comparison. Let's, um, let's consider this. If you have a New American Standard Version, the word Christ has been omitted 34 times. Let me just put this in front of me so I could see it better. The word Christ has been omitted 34 times from the New American Standard Version. It's been omitted 25 times from the New International Version. In the Revised Standard Version, it was omitted 32 times, and so on. And there's a couple others, I won't bother reading those. Let's go on and look at some others. The word Lord, capital L, is been omitted 352 times from the NIV, the New, the New International Version, or as I like to say, the not inspired version. The New American Standard Version, which is supposed to be the most literal translation because it's based on the original text, omits the word Lord 438 times. The name of Jesus is omitted 292 times from the NIV and it's omitted 64 times from the New American Standard. The word God with a capital G is omitted 468 times from the NIV and 87 times from the New American Standard Version. Now this is really very telling. The name Lucifer is gone from the NIV. And it's gone from the New American Standard Version. The word devil or devils is missing 80 times in the New International Version and 82 times in the New American Standard. And get this, hell. Well, hell must not be real because it's missing 40 times in the New American Standard, excuse me, 41 times in the New American Standard and 40 times from the NIV. And I could reference many other versions and it's about the same thing. The word heaven is missing 160 times from the New International Version 
and it's missing 127 times from the New American Standard. Now get this, blood. We're washed in the blood. We're saved by the blood of Christ. We're redeemed by his blood. And it is missing, the word blood is missing 41 times from the New International Version and 39 times from the New American Standard. The word of God is, that phrase, the word of God is missing eight times in the New International Version and two times in the New American Standard Version. And the word of the Lord, that phrase, the word of the Lord, is missing 25 times from the New NIV and two times from the New uh, American Standard Version. And you know, a lot of people are now using the New King James. Well, there's almost as many omissions in the New King James as there are in the NIV and the New American Standard. People think the new King James just changed a few archaic words. No, that's not true. Did you know the word devils is missing 81 times in the new, the new King James? The word heaven is missing 50 times in the new King James. The word blood is missing 23 times in the new King James. Now get this. And this will be the last one. The phrase, the Lord Jesus Christ, is missing 24 times in the New International Version and 21 times in the New American Standard Version. In the Revised Standard Version, it's missing 21 times. In the New Revised Standard Version, it's missing 22 times. And a bunch of others, which I won't, which I won't name, I won't take the time. And you know what? All together, all together, if you have a New International Version, there are a total of 5,219 words missing from the NIV compared to the King James Bible. The New American Standard Version, there are 3,000 561 words missing from the New American Standard Version and on and on and on. This is one of the ways that Satan is attacking the Word of God. He provided someone with a set of manuscripts in 1621 that came, again, came from a monastery in Alexandria, Egypt. And it's been proven to be bogus. It's been proven by real Bible scholars to be bogus. And yet, and yet, it is the basis for the translation of all these other versions. Most people think that these other versions are some sort of updated version of the King James or that it's easier to read than the King James. That is false. What most people don't understand is that all these other versions but the King James are translated from a different set of manuscripts. They're not updated versions of the King James. They're translated from an entirely different set of manuscripts. These ones that came out of the trash can in 1621. Again, it sounds crazy. Most people don't know this. It's a, it's a truth that the only people that really have knowledge of this are the professors in the Bible colleges and the seminaries that are training men and women to be pastors and teachers in your church. And they've decided, 
that these so-called older manuscripts, and they've never proven that they're older or that they're more accurate, these manuscripts are the ones we're supposed to use. And so they dismiss the King James. Well, isn't it very suspicious that all these words and verses would be missing in these other versions? Well, we know why. We know why it's Satan's attack on the real word of God. Now, that's not to say that God only preserved his word in the English language in the King James. There's other versions that are written in other languages that are based upon that majority text that was in existence before 1621. The issue is not do we have the complete word of God, but where is it? That's the issue. So I just wanted to share that with you tonight. Hopefully this will make you think about this issue. Because some of us are sitting around, we've got an NIV on our bookshelf, or we got a New American Standard or one of these other versions. And as far as we ever knew, they were okay. They were all right to use. And we didn't know. You didn't know the real issue. Because the enemy's trying to keep keep it from you. The enemy's trying to get you to believe that you've got a more accurate or updated version. No. God promised to preserve his word perfect. And that can't be true if all of a sudden we find more of his words or words that need to be changed in a trash can in 1621 in Egypt. So please think about these issues. And uh, we'll see you next Monday night. Hello again. Hope you enjoyed the recording. If you liked it, would you please help us with our YouTube ratings? Would you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel? You can unsubscribe anytime you like. It helps us reach more people with the teaching of the word rightly divided. For more information on our online Bible classes, please check our website at www.gracebiblenetwork.org. We are a nonprofit entity supported by our ministry partners, and we will never solicit donations. This is God's ministry, and he always provides for our needs. Remember that God's grace is a gift itself, freely given us through his son. His grace is sufficient to save you from all your sins. But only if you have faith in what Christ has already completed for you on your behalf. He died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day for our justification. Thank you very much.